What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Cargo, and I am doing another tutorial video today um, because playing Battlefield 3, not many people seem to know what they're doing when they're playing the sniper class in any game modes. Snipers are definitely one of the most important parts of a team game, and so I thought I'd go over what I thought was the best way to do it, or the best way to be a sniper. Now, uh, the best way I think to be a sniper is to be a marksman squad support sniper. So you have uh, a sniper that can shoot, has a large clip size and can shoot quickly. Um, and then squad support, meaning you're fairly close to your squad most of the time. You're not in the back of the map. And this is coming from somebody who not I, I don't claim to be the best sniper out there. Um, but I have had a lot of success both in MAG as well as in Battlefield 3 playing as a squad support sniper. And it just has worked out really well. So I'll go through kind of what I do when I'm playing a squad support sniper and what's worked for me and then any tips and suggestions I might have. Oh yeah, that happens every time I uh, knife somebody in the back when I'm recon class. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I don't know why Battlefield, like people at Battlefield 3 like coded that in just for me, but that was very nice of them. All right, but let's get started with what I actually do that makes me a successful squad support sniper. Um, number one is always being close to the squad. I think that's the number one thing that could help you out when you're sniping is because being in the back of the map doesn't help you out all that much. Um, you might have a couple good games here and there where you kill a lot of people, but when it comes down to it, you're not helping your squad out when you're sitting in the back of the map. I don't care what kind of vantage you have. And I, I don't care like what you think you're doing. The best thing to do is to be up with your squad. And so you can see right here that that's what I'm doing mostly. Anyways, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm right up here. I even got the plant because when you're right up here uh, next to your squad, that's just where you're the most effective. And of course, then you can pick people off from longer distances. Nobody says just because you're close to your squad, you have to be shooting people who are two feet in front of you. That's your squad's job. Um, I mean, if it comes down to it, you can do it as well. But you can still pick, be picking off people from long range away. Um, the next thing is always being up with your squad, but staying slightly behind. Because as you more than know, probably, um, people, the enemy, will always run out after the first guy they see. So, like, when you're moving up in Rush in Battlefield 3, the enemy will see one of your allies, they'll come out to try and knife him or shoot him, but instead of him dying, you're there to spot him and you take him out before the guy, uh, the enemy, can take your squad mate out. Or your teammate. So, that's something you need to keep in mind, too. It's positioning. It's not just, like, being at the front lines all the time with your squad. It's being with your squad so that you can help them out, but being far enough back that you can kind of get, you kind of get an overview in an overwatch of the area and can take out any threats that are sneaking around. Um, another is to take advantage of the opportunities you're given. Now, just because you're a sniper doesn't mean you can't make plants. Like, this is my second plant that I've made in this game. Unfortunately, right here, I miserably fail to kill this guy because I try and knife him and it doesn't work out. So, uh, that one didn't work out, but if you see an objective that needs to be taken in Rush or in Domination... What, is it Domination? Uh, the one with the flags. That mode. You know, just take it. Don't worry about waiting for your team just because you're a sniper. Um, and always make sure to have your alleys open because you're most effective, of course, as a sniper when you can look down long corridors or over large parts of the map. Um, and this is that's kind of what I'm doing right here, is I'm trying to hold down this left side so that my team can push up. Um, I'm having varied success here, <laughs> as, as you can see. I'm not doing the greatest, but you know, I have my spawn beacon down, my motion sensor set up, so I'm giving my teammates the best opportunity possible to advance up towards that objective. Now, they've already taken out B. Oop, did you like that little back duck through there? Bet you didn't know you could do that. Anyways, um, so yeah, you cover these corridors. Now right here, I actually mess up. I get a little too excited and, and get a little too far forward, which ends up being my demise right there. Um, but it, it was kind of a good thought that I wanted to be with my team, but I just went a little bit too far. So 
it's definitely all about uh, being a squad support sniper is gauging how close you actually need to be to your squad. Um, and it's, there's no one rule, I would say. It kind of depends on the situation, how close you want to be, whether you want to be like, literally right next to them, or whether, like I said, you want to be a little bit of ways back so you can um, take out enemy snipers or people, enemies sneaking around or flanking your teammates. And so... I think those are the three, well, is that three? I don't know how many things I've, uh, any, how many suggestions I've made so far, but those are the most important ones right there um, that will help you because you need to get the basic concepts down before you can work on the little things. But one other thing that you can definitely, um, I think, will help is actually what loadout you go. Um, and this applies to essentially all games with marksman rifles and of course marksman rifles being the snipers that shoot fast and have a, a larger clip um, always run with the silencer and then something like a red dot or like I'm using the RDS but uh, almost every game has a red dot that you can stick on one of those things because you're gonna be at close enough range that you don't need a zoomed scope you just don't need it um, and if the enemy is far enough away that you'd be needing a zoom scope, you should not be engaging them with a marksman rifle. It's as simple as that, because they'll be able to get behind cover before you can kill them with it, with marksman rifles, since it takes so many hits. Um, and then, let's see, the next thing is, of course, this is battlefield specific, but nevertheless, it's still important, uh, is your equipment positioning essentially. Now I always run with the motion sensor and of course everybody has to run with the uh, spawn beacon. Um, but both are really important because you need to place them in some place that will grant your allies quick access to the objectives yet far enough away that they're not in any danger of getting essentially killed right when they spawn. It's kind of the same thing with the APCs or the LAVs. You want to have them far enough back that they don't get uh, annihilated by rocket fire, yet close enough that your allies aren't far, don't have to book it too far to get to the objectives. Now, right here is another place I actually don't do as well as I could have during this game. I uh, am kind of hanging too far back. This is one of those situations where I kind of mis misgauge how far I should be ahead. Because uh, I was a little bit, I was being a pansy, kind of. I didn't want to go up and get myself killed, so I was hanging back and waiting for my allies, waiting for stuff to happen. But you just, when this happens, you have to make sure you just jump up. Because, especially in this situation, the enemy isn't advancing too far towards me. It's just I'd be out in the open. But you can easily deal with that. You just need to get up there and start shooting. Um, because just hanging behind all the time isn't going to get you far. So, yeah, I think right now is kind of when I realize that I'm too far back. I'm not getting enough kills because I think that the uh, you should be aiming for about two kills a minute when you're in playing Rush. Um, and, of course, you will you should be getting more as you get better. Um, because two kills per minute, essentially, that's, that's a good ratio of how much damage you're doing and how much you're holding the enemy back. So, if you're not... If you don't think you're getting about two kills per minute, you should move to a different location. And so that's what I did right here. I moved up a little bit where I'd have a be closer and have a better angle on the enemy and allow my friends to move up because, of course, they see that I'm up there, so then they move up. Ah, right here, I get a little bit greedy. I go for some kills and then run into about three guys. It doesn't work out so well. Of course, it doesn't help that I was fighting a USAS guy with frag rounds. Gosh, I love people who use USAS for frag rounds. So elite. So elite. Alright, so right here I'm doing good, but I'm thinking that I'm not getting enough kills. So I decide to move up here because my kill count, my kill, my kills per minute, well that's what we'll call it. My kills per minute is slowing down. And plus I need to get into a better position to cover my allies who are trying to get B. 
because you should never just be going for kills as a squad support sniper. The goal is squad support. And if you do it correctly, you'll be getting lots of kills. But your goal should be supporting your squad, and then the kills will come later. Um, it's definitely something a lot of snipers mess up when they are playing. They just try to go for mass kills, and they totally threw out the objectives. So they may be, you know, may have a 10-1 KDR with, you know, 40 kills, but they still lose the game because they weren't in the right position. Now here, I move up again because I wasn't getting enough kills, and I wanted to be in closer proximity to the objective as we capped it. So positioning is really everything when you're a squad support sniper. You want to be far enough back that you're not getting killed all the time, yet close enough that you get good angles on all the objectives and enemy players. I definitely think that Marksman is the way to go over something like a bolt action. Or anything of the bolt action genre, I would say. So it might have a clip, but it shoots as slow as a bolt action. At least in a video game. Because bolt actions require a lot more accuracy for you to be good. Now, if you can play accurately with a bolt action, you would be just as good as somebody using a Marksman because you're accurate enough that it doesn't matter that you can't shoot fast. You can just pop somebody in the head or the chest, and then they'll be done. But unfortunately, most of the snipers in this game aren't one-hit kill, and most of the snipers in most games aren't one-hit kill. So that's why bolt actions really aren't that good, unless you're playing Call of Duty. And that's why I recommend using Marksman's. Plus, you can lay down so much more suppressing fire. And plus, you can do that at close range, which is something that... Most people who use bolt actions would be hard pressed to do. Now there are people out there definitely who are really really good with bolt actions, but uh, they are few and far between. So we're just kind of wrapping the game up now. We're just we're cruising at this point. I'm trying to provide Overwatch on the left side, but they're getting rolled so hard that I didn't even see anybody. But look at the ridiculous score that I racked up. I uh, got three medals. I think it's 24 ribbons and then a service star. And it all added up to about 46,000 points. And I think that's the most I've ever totaled in one game. But anyway, thanks for watching. Keep calm and super champion.